A while back, I wrote an animation system called Fade that runs on the ESP32 microcontroller. I've built a number of these systems, but this one is unique because the animations are defined using a language that I created. If you want more details on that system, I've put a link in the upper corner. I use it to create things like the hack -a lantern a decoration from Costco that I modified to add RGB LEDs to. After Hackaday did an article on it, I was asked the following question. Can Fade do animations with 40 servos? That got me thinking. This requires an explanation of the Fade architecture. There's a web interface that is used to put the program on the physical device. That program is then passed to the language interpreter, which implements the language loops, functions, variables, etc. Eventually, it will hit animation commands, and those are passed to the animation system, which is responsible for fading each channel from the current brightness or color to the desired brightness or color over a specified period of time. That is why the language is called fade. When it actually wants to make a change, to set an LED to a given color, it sends a command down to what is generally called a hardware abstraction layer. This layer hides the details of the hardware from the rest of the program. This allows the system to support RGB LEDs, including the ever-popular WS2812 LEDs I used in the hack -a lantern but it can also support simple LEDs that can be dimmed with pulse width modulation using the hardware built into the ESP32. The program defines what kind of LEDs it is using, it can support whatever mix you want, and the system sends the commands to the appropriate hardware. This has already been very useful. I built a program called WinFade that allows you to test your animation code on Windows before sending it to the ESP microcontroller. Here's an example of a snowflake animation running in WinFade. This pluggable architecture made servo support easy. Just take the code that currently supports PWM LEDs and modify that code to support servos. It turned out to be harder than I'd hoped. The cheap servos that I'm using aren't digital devices, and the standard for how servos translate the signals they receive to movement isn't really a standard, so the system needs to include a lot of annoying tunability, but it works fine. That solved the how can I support servos part of the question, but it didn't solve the how can I handle 40 servos part. The ESP32 only supports 16 PWM channels, and therefore can only support 16 servos at once. There are boards that you can get to support more, but they are generally pricier than the ESP32 is. So I decided to leverage the pluggable approach and add in another output type. The UDP forwarder simply takes the animation commands for a given set of channels and sends them out over the network as UDP messages. That gets the animations available on the local network. Then I added a UDP receiver that runs on a second ESP that can pull those UDP messages off the network and send them to their local hardware. This allows the driver USP that is running the actual program to delegate channels to the helper ESP, and that allows more than 16 servos. It also makes development a bit easier. The forwarder code can also run in the WinFade simulator which means that the code running in the WinFade IDE can be driving the remote hardware directly for test purposes. This is sometimes easier than sending the program to the ESP to execute directly. I now had the architecture that supported the scenario. I just needed a test project to show it off. I'm a child of the 1970s and 1980s. Knight Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. That LED effect is known as a Larson scanner after the inventor Glenn A. Larson. It was also used in the original Battlestar Galactica series. LED Larson scanners are nothing special, but what about a physical Larson scanner that used servos? That was a stupid enough idea to get behind. After a few iterations with Fusion 360 and my laser cutter, I ended up with this prototype. It has eight servos in the bottom and uses painted ping pong balls as the display devices. Originally, my goal was to build two 16-channel versions and hook them together with the forwarding support I built, but I never got beyond the eight-channel prototype. Here's the finished product.
Let's watch that again. The effect would probably look better if the movement was vertical, but that would have made the mechanicals more complex, and I had already lost interest. My plan is to repurpose this as a physical display for something like weather forecasts. If you like this video, there's probably something wrong with you, but maybe you could tell your friends anyway.